It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl. We enjoy having you with us today. We hope you play along with our outstanding young people here. This is a special edition. The two teams you're about to meet today, University Park and Glendale, they've won once previously, and today's winner will move on to the semifinal eliminations playing Greenbelt Elementary School. So a lot at stake and a lot of talent that we're gonna have on our show here today. We welcome you here to, uh, I'm in the studio here in Landover and all of our students because of the pandemic are safely at home and we're doing our show on Zoom as so much has been done throughout the pandemic. We're all very used to Zoom. All right, we have no buzzers here, uh, but we still give our students 50 points just for showing up and looking good. And we deduct nothing for incorrect answers. And uh, we also have uh, something very similar here. We've kept all the categories that we've had for all 35 of our years. And if you don't know them, here are our six categories. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. All right, it's just about time to start here. Each of our teams will get 18 questions, nine in a first round, nine in a second. Uh, in each category, they're worth five, 15, and 25 points. We'll take a break in between and talk to them about themselves and their schools. And uh, the winner today, as I was saying, will go on to the semifinal eliminations. All right, let's meet our first team. They come from Glendale Elementary School, and would you say hello to? And let's have a nice big wave from Jason. Jason, say hello to everybody. And there is Farah. Hey, Farah. And how about a shout out from Muhammad? Muhammad, say hi. Muhammad's got on his, his school shirt, school spirit. It says, Go Gators. The Glendale Gators. And oh, Farah's got one too. All right. These guys mean business today. All right. If you are ready, Glendale, let's start with your green things category questions. There are three of them. Here's the five point question. Palm oil trees are so efficient at producing palm oil, which is in most everything we eat today, because they are evergreens and grow year round, making them this P initial kind of plant. A plant that comes back year after year after year is known by what P initialed term? It's the opposite of annual, it is perennial. Those are perennials, plants that come back year after year. Let's try the 15 point question. While plants can't hear, even though at one time people said you should play music for your plants to make them feel good. Even though plants can't hear, corn plants, Jason, listen to me and watch me. Even though plants can't hear, corn plants have these that you can eat. Buds. Not buds. Corn plants have ears. And you eat an ear of corn. You eat an ear of corn. Ears is what I was looking for there. Let's try the 25 point question. Carnivorous plants like the Venus flytrap can photosynthesize. They can make their own food, but they also need to eat meat to get this N initialed nutrient that's missing from the soils they grow in. Nutrient. What does the N stand for? It's a chemical element. Nitrogen. Nitrogen. That's it. You got the 25 points. That's good. That's the way to get that game started. All right. Let's go to the zoo. Zoo parade for five points. Hmm. I know you know this one. This largest aquatic crustacean 
with tasty claws to eat has an even tastier tail. Lobster. Lobster. Lobster, the red lobster. That's it. Good. For 15 points. We know fish don't have fingers or toes. They don't even have whiskers like cats do, so they can feel what's going around in their environment. But scientists now think that these locomotive structures on fish have a very similar sensory function. What do fish have instead of fingers or toes or whiskers to let them know what's going on around them? Fins. Fins, that's it. Thank you, Farah. Good. 25 points is a visual question. Everybody look at this. You know, this is a little disturbing because all of these creatures were alive at one time. You're looking at a taxidermy shop. While taxidermy is the preparation of dead animals for display purposes like you see here, this similar sounding T initialed word is the science of classifying animals into kingdoms and phylums and genuses and species. What is that similar sounding T initialed word that describes the classification of animals? Trait. Trait. Not traits, that's a good try. It's called taxonomy. Taxonomy versus taxidermy. Let's go to the body. Body systems for five points. You know, when your nose starts to bleed, could be because you got punched or the air is so dry that it's starting to bleed. The blood is flowing from these smallest blood vessels in your nose that have ruptured. Allopurulin. Say it again. No. no. Step. Oh, you're close. It's a sound-alike word. Help the poor guy out. It's not caterpillars. Muhammad, do you know? No, Lara no, is no, trying. No. Oh, she's on the tip of her. So, boy, Jason, you came so close. It's called capillaries. Capillaries, not caterpillars. Capillaries. You'll get that one next time. All right, here's a multiple choice question for you for 15 points in body systems. In addition to our four basic tastes, sweet, salty, sour, and bitter, there's a fifth taste that describes the taste of MSG, that substance you find in Chinese food. Is the fifth taste known as uhura, uvula, or umami? Umami. It is umami. umami. That's right. Yeah, that's the fifth one. Good answer. Here's your last question in the opening round. You guys are doing fine. 25 points in body systems. After his son died from smallpox, Benjamin Franklin, the great American, encouraged everyone to get infected with a mild form of smallpox in order to build up this I initial defense against the disease. Immunity. Immunity. You got it. That's exactly right. That's the 25 pointer. You got practically all those 25 pointers. You did really well. You end the first round with 135 points. You're sitting pretty. You are sitting pretty. We'll see you in a few moments. All right, it is now time to meet our second team today from University Park Elementary School. They too, like Glendale, won their original game and they are here today to see which one will advance to the semifinals. Let's meet the team from University Park and let's have a nice big wave from Anders. Anders, say hi to everybody. And he's joined by his teammate, Charlotte. Hey, Charlotte. And Isaac. All right, you guys know how to play this game, and if you are ready, let's go. Let's get to the green things questions. Here it is for five points. If you've decided in this new year to be a better student, you're already good students, or say to clean up your room more often, it could be said that you have turned over a new one of these, the things that photosynthesize on tree branches. Say it again. A new, leaf. a new leaf is right. You have turned over a new leaf. Perfect way to start your game. Next, most of the trees were petrified and can now be found in Arizona's petrified forest were gymnosperms, like pines and firs. They are also known by this C-initialed name. Um, not, not sure. sure. Um, um. We're looking for coniferous trees, conifers. Conifers also are gymnosperms. 
Let's finish out the green things category with the 25 point question. Since squirrels' nests, easily visible as, as, as big clumps of dead leaves on bare tree branches, you can see them here in the winter, they keep squirrels warm. It confirms that dead leaves, like the blocks of ice used to make igloos, are very good what? An I initialed answer. <laughs> Insulators. 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 Mm -hmm. You got it, Charlotte. That's what I want to hear. 25 points. Well done. Let's go to the zoo. Five points. Cars that run on both gasoline and electricity have the same name as animals like mules that are crosses between a horse and a donkey. Hybrid. 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 Hybrids. That's it. Yeah, you're rolling. 15 points in the zoo is a visual question, University Park. Flightless birds like this flightless cormorant often live on islands where food is abundant and there's no need to fear that they'll be eaten themselves since there are no what P initialed answer. Predator. predator. No predators there, so there's nothing to escape from. Good answer. All right, for 25 points, a multiple choice question for you. Listen carefully. Some insects like flies and bees and butterflies will land on the faces of animals, like crocodiles and birds and cows, to practice something called, listen to this spelling, it's called lacrophagy, L-A-C-H-R-Y, P-H-A-G-Y. They practice lacrophagy, these insects that are on the faces of crocodiles and birds and cows. My question to you is, it's a multiple choice, do these insects drink the tears from the animal's eyes? pick off bacteria and parasites from the skin, or pick the teeth, the scraps of food, out of the teeth of these animals? Um, um faith, faith, I'm pretty sure, sure means like, like mouth. mouth. So maybe, so maybe pick, 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 pick the teeth? Yeah, pick the teeth. Pick the teeth? Mm, yeah. Uh, the clue there was the beginning of that big word, L-A-C-H-R-Y, because you have lacrimal glands that produce tears. So these insects, they drink the tears to get the salt from the eyes of these animals. That was a good try. Let's go to the body. Your last three questions in this opening round. While Pinocchio is known for his nose, Dumbo, the elephant, for his ears, and Popeye the sailor for his muscles, the fairy tale character Rapunzel is known for this body part. Hair. 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 Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your long hair. That's it. Multiple choice for body systems for 15 points. If you're in a gym using a rowing machine, you're likely trying to strengthen which back muscles? The glutes, the lats, or the pecs? Um, I think so. Glutes. I think, I think so. so. What do you, what guys, do you guys think? think? I, I don't, don't think, think the... the I don't, I don't think, think I don't I don't think it's the pet. I think it's the glutes. All right, okay. so we're gonna let uh, our captain uh, Anders again. Glutes, lats, or pecs. You choose. I'm glutes. glutes. Uh, the glutes are actually your butt muscles. And Charlotte was right, the pec muscles are on the front. It's called the lats, the latissimus dorsi. Here's your 25 pointer. Let's get this one in body systems. Your smartphone, if you have a smartphone. Uh, can tell its owner by a passcode, also by fingerprints, voice patterns, facial recognition. What B initialed prefix for the word metrics describes these identifiers? Bio. Bio. Got it. Biometrics for 25 points. Just what I needed to hear. So this means you end this first round, UP, with 130 points. Excellent work. All right, it's time to bring back our team from Glendale. And before I ask any more science questions, a few personal ones of our players here. If you didn't see them the first time they appeared, let's go to our captain here, Jason. And Jason, again, uh, you are VIPs, very important people, but so too are your coach and your principal. Tell people who they are. Uh, our coach is Thank you very much. And I know that they're out there rooting for you today. Did you have any alternates on your team? Yes, yes Solomon. Solomon. Solomon, wonderful. Important part of the team. Uh, tell me how you guys prepare to be on the Science Bowl. Well, uh, 
we watched, we watched videos, videos about what the science Great. Yeah, that's the best way because you get a sense of the kinds of questions we ask and the cadence of it. And uh, tell me, what has this been like for you in the pandemic? You told me last time you adjusted pretty well to this. Are you anxious to get back into school itself? Yes. yes. Yeah, I think we all just want to get back to normal here. You're playing a nice game. Let's find out about your teammates. Let's talk to Farah. Farah, uh, you were doing so well today. You did so well the time before, and you told me that you just love science, and it shows. It shows. And you told me you wanted to be an occupational therapist the last time we talked. What was the motivation for that? Why do you want to do that? Well, well I have twin, twin sisters. sisters. Yes. I have yes. six of them. And if you get, get occupational therapy, therapy and, and um, it looks interesting. interesting. Now, now we'll to do it. Wow. I bet your sister's very proud of you, and I know you help her out. And uh, I think you'd be a great therapist. And uh, you already have developed some good discipline and study habits here. So keep up your good work. Let's talk, out, talk to your other player, and that's Muhammad. Muhammad, uh, tell me uh, a little bit about what you want to do in the future. Didn't you want to be a software engineer? Or were you interested in engineering? Uh, no, I'm not interested in engineering. I'm more interested in the health. I want, I want to, to be a doctor. doctor when I grow up. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's great. And I commented already on the Gators there, uh, the Glendale Gators. And uh, I know you're rooting for your team to win, right? Mm -hmm. We finished up with the word immunity, the last answer in the body systems category. So let's go to let's get physical. If you guys are ready, here we go. Let's get physical for five points. The story goes that a Santa Claus is displeased with you and how you've acted this past year. You might get a chunk of this fossil fuel in your stocking. Coal. 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 A lump of coal. That's right. I know you guys won't be getting any coal. For 15 points. If you've seen the movie The Wizard of Oz, you'll know about this. The Tin Woodsman in The Wizard of Oz was so badly rusted that he needed Dorothy to oil his joints. Those joints, though, were not made of tin, even though he was a tin man. Tin doesn't easily rust, but rather he had hinges, joints, made of this chemical element that does rust. Metal? metal. 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 Specifically, which one? Because tin is uh, metal as well. Iron. Say it again. Iron. Iron. Aluminum. Okay, I'm hearing lots of different answers. I'm going to go to Jason. Jason, you've heard a lot of offerings there. Which one would you like to use as your answer? Iron. Steel. Steel. Uh, actually, it was iron. It was iron. Iron is what rusts. It oxidizes. All right, let's make it up on this next question here. This is, let's get physical for 25 points. It's a visual question. Let's bring up a picture for you. You've seen these. These look like windmills on steroids. Look how big they are. There are now some of these T-initialed electricity generators in Europe with blades as wide as two football fields. What is a T-initialed electricity generator known as for 25 points? Those are called turbines, turbines, an electrical turbine. You know, they're spinning and they're generating. That mechanical motion is converted into electrical energy. Let's go to the potpourri category. Oh, I think everybody knows the Tasmanian devil. The Tasmanian devil, thanks to Warner Brothers cartoons, is very well known. A very well known Australian marsupial. There was also a Tasmanian version of what big cat in India that has far more stripes, no pouch, and while not extinct, it is very much endangered. Tiger? Tiger, good. You were listening to all those clues there. India, stripes, endangered. Tiger, five, good. Let's go to 15 points. Potpourri. Nutritionists say the best kind of oil to eat comes from olives, especially E-V-O-O which is extra virgin olive oil. 
It's good for you because it contains plenty of the nutrients known as monosaturated what's? Fats? You got it, Farah. Monosaturated fats it is. Good answer. If you ever watch Rachel Ray, she has a cooking show in the morning. She is a big pro pro proponent of EVOO, extra virgin olive oil. Here's your 25-point question in potpourri. During this pandemic, many government agencies with acronyms, letters, letters for names, have become familiar to us. The CDC is the Centers for Disease Control. OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Administration. And then there's the government agency known as the EPA. What is it? It's the Environmental Protection Agency. It is trying to make sure that animals don't go extinct and all the water we drink and the air we breathe is pure or as pure as it can be. Let's go to the Dateline question for five points. You'll know this one. Scientists have measured how quickly the oceans are rising as the glaciers melt on this largest island in the world that by rights should be called Iceland. Antarctica? Antarctica. 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 Alaska? Not Alaska, no. The largest island in the world. Remember, Alaska is not an island. It does look like one. Is that big Say it again. I was going to say Hawaii, but no. Not Hawaii. There'd be no glaciers in Hawaii. Maybe, maybe at the top of their volcanoes. Say it again, Mohammed. Say it, Jason. Antarctica. Not Antarctica is a good guess as well. The largest island in the world is Greenland. Greenland. But see, since Greenland is covered with ice, it really should be called Iceland. And Iceland should be called Greenland. They kind of mix them up. All right, here's the 15 point question and dateline. The program for returning Americans to the moon in 2024 is named Artemis, A R T E M I S. In mythology, Artemis was the sister of what other god whose name was identified with America's first moon landing program back in the 1960s and 70s? Apollo. Apollo, you Apollo. got it. Good, 15. All right, here's your last question of the game. Let's go out with a bang. Two-part answer. A new book called What Stars Are Made Of tells the story of Cecilia Payne Gabishan, who discovered before many of her male colleagues that stars are made primarily of these two chemical elements, the first two on the periodic table. Name them for 25 points. Hydrogen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need the first two. Hydrogen is one. Carbon dioxide. Boy, that was a valiant try. It was hydrogen. The second element on the periodic table is helium. You know, the one that makes you, you sound, uh, your voice sound funny if you breathe it in. You end a game with 175 points. That is very respectable. We'll see how it stacks up with your opponents. All right, it's now time to bring back the team from University Park and to find out a little bit more about these wonderful players here. Let's start with their captain, Anders. And Anders, uh, tell us uh, the name of your coach and your principal, please. Um, um, Mr. 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 and Toy David. David. Wonderful, and they're out there, and I think they're with us today, too. I know they are big supporters of the science ball team, and you guys in particular. Uh, Tell me what you do in your spare time, Anders. Um, I, like I like going, going on, on bike, bike rides. rides. Yeah. Do you wear a helmet? I hope you do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You got to be careful out there because there are a lot of people who are inattentive out there. And what do you attribute your science knowledge to? Because you know so much. Um, um, probably probably just, just um, watching watch videos, videos about, about science, science stuff. stuff. Yeah, that's good. That's a good way to do it. Um, and obviously, you're doing it well. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's find out a little bit more about Charlotte. Charlotte, you also know an awful lot about science, and uh, you must be a great student. I know you're a great student. Any other uh, secrets that you have about getting ready for something like this? Oh, well, not, not really. I pay attention to science, but we'll practice it. And read a bunch of books. And about science. 
Yeah, there's so much on the web about science, so many science news for students and science and science daily. Yeah, we're uh, inundated. We, are, we have an awful lot of information out there, and I'm glad you're availing yourself of it. Uh, tell me what you do in your spare time. Um, I like to um, um, go out on my chair, and then, and then also, also I like to video games. You like to do what? Um, I'll play video games. Video games, yeah, well that... You sound like a normal young lady to me. That's what you should be doing, yeah. And on these long pandemic days, yeah, it comes in handy. It makes time that some of that time go by. Good playing here today, Charlotte. And let's talk to Isaac. Isaac, nice to have you back again. And uh, is that your room that we're looking at? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty pretty neat. I bet mom is real happy to see that it's in such good order there. Tell me what you do in your spare time, Isaac. Um, I play, I play video games with friends. Um, um, there's a game, game I, I play, play with, um, oh my, kind of like my, the, the, the people, people I work with, with, and, and my, helper, is okay. a game called Bleeding, really, really fun. That sounds like a lot of fun, and again, something, not only to occupy your mind, but to, to uh, kind of give you a break from going to school on a laptop every day. And I also, and I also um, like, like playing, playing soccer with my friends and, and kickball. Kickball and soccer. So you're getting outside, you're getting some exercise. That's important too. Even our winters aren't so bad anymore. You can get outside now, uh, even in the dead of winter. You know, I would like to see a little more snow though. And if you're ready, let's do, let's get physical for five points. Here we go, University Park. During the pandemic quarantine, many people stuck at home have been turning to baking. So much so that yeast has disappeared from store shelves, as well as this chemical compound with the formula C6, H12, O6, and derived from cane and beets. Um, um, the, the cane, cane is sugar, sugar, but I don't, but I don't know what yeah. beets is. Um, some kind, some kind of, of spice. spice. I'm not going to uh, have you, it, it is sugar, it is sugar, you got it at eight. Sugar cane, there are also things known as sugar beets, but C6H1206 is the formula for sugar. Good answer. Here is the Let's Get Physical for 15 points. Galvanized steel, used to make garbage cans, among many other products, doesn't rust because it's protected by a thin outer layer of this chemical element, the last alphabetically. Um, zinc? Zinc is right, yes. The zinc, the kitchen zinc. Let's go to 25 points and let's get physical. While the wings of an airplane provide the lift necessary for flight, it's the jet engines that power it through the air by providing this force. Thrust. 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 It is, you got it, you got it. Let's do potpourri for five points. You know, wearing masks and keeping socially distant is not only reducing our chances of catching COVID, but has also caused a huge drop in what two other viral diseases that afflict so many of us every winter. Probably the, Probably the flu and the, and the common cold. cold. You got it, maybe, the maybe. flu and the common cold, exactly right. For 15 points in potpourri, silver and gold mark the 25th and 50th anniversaries for married couples. But if they stay married for 75 years, it's commemorated with this, this hardest mineral on the Mohs scale, M-O-H-S. Diamond. Diamond. Diamond anniversary, indeed it is. We all know about cats landing on their feet when they're dropped. <clears throat> well, one of the only animals that can survive being dropped from any height is the squirrel, because it quickly reaches terminal what? Velocity. 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 It reaches terminal velocity very quickly, and it uh, it seems never to get injured. Let's go to the dateline. You guys are doing well. Five points. It seems that the scapegoat for the coronavirus, the animal that is getting blamed, is once again this mammal, the only one that can actually fly. Uh, bats. Bats. bats, yes. Bats have been indicted as the possible source of that virus. For 15 points is a picture. Visual question, have a look. In the tradition of Galileo, African-American physicist George Carruthers, you see him here when he was quite young, 
built one of these instruments that was taken to the moon by Apollo 16 astronauts and used to take stunning pictures of the solar system. Telescope? Telescope, oh. indeed. He, had an, he invented an infrared telescope that sent back those pictures like the ones of the moon of the Earth on the horizon. Last question for you in the game, 25 points in Dateline. This doctor, America's premier epidemiologist and allergy specialist, has insisted time and time again throughout the pandemic that we must rely on science to guide us. Fauci. Fauci, Dr. Anthony Fauci. He even has his own bobblehead. He is so popular. Tune you end the game with 265 points. You're grinning from ear to ear. You guys did a really good job today. I hope you enjoyed this game. Hope you were able to keep up. There were some wonderful answers here. There's some rather tough questions out there. But all of our students today, they made it look easy. We are so proud of each and every one of them. Our final tally today is Glendale 175, University Park 265. Congratulations, University Park. Mr. Fabero, Ms. Davis, congratulations. We are going to see you in the next round. You'll be taking on Greenbelt in April. And Glendale, we loved having you here, and you pulled out some answers like a rabbit from a hat sometimes. You knew how to play this game. So let's have a nice round of applause for both Glendale and University Park. Miss Pussy is out there, Miss Porterfield, if you're with us, and all of our alternates. And we're all going to wave and we're going to put on a big smile on our face because we're so happy that you were here today and we hope you'll join us again. I'm Dave Zarin. Until next time, bye bye. <laughs>